Hello, and welcome to today's daily study. Today we're going through some verses of Matthew 18. Um, this one, we're continuing just a little bit after Christ was talking to his disciples about the innocence of children and how we should become more childlike. Now, I don't know if I had an opportunity to really go into the difference between being childlike and being childish. So being childlike is that innocence, it's that um, desire to please, it's the desire to obey, it's the I want to be around my parents, I want to do the right things, you know, I want to make them happy, I want to laugh, play, you know, I want to have a good spirit, basically. Whereas being childish is kind of like that selfish, whiny, complaintative, like, there's a big difference between being childlike and being childish. And uh, you can definitely, there are a lot of really great talks, one especially from Jeffrey R. Holland, who speaks on, on very much this, this topic, um, where he says that there's no situation in life that can't be made infinitely worse by whining about it. So, anyway, and so... This is just a little bit after that discussion, the one that we were talking more about yesterday. And so when Christ said, for the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost, in other words, I'm saving that which was lost, and these children, these little ones, are not one of them. And he continues on from there. And he says, how think ye? So in other words, what do you think? He's talking to his disciples. He's saying, what do you think? If a man have an hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? So here, of course, Christ is comparing those that are part of the church, who are kind of part of the, the religious movement, I guess, in general, to being those that kind of stay in their pen. They're, they're the ones that... Uh, already listen and they're not uh they're not wandering they're not uh, uh being disobedient they're not being fight they're not fighting they're not being rebellious and this one which does leave is are are those people who are rebellious who do go against the um teachings of Christ and there is another interpretation of this in which the um, sheep are the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So obviously in this case, they wouldn't be the super righteous ones. They would just be the ones that kind of stay where they are and don't really move. Um, and the one which got lost is the people who kind of reject the teachings of the, the Pharisees and Sadducees. So there are a couple different interpretations. I'm not very particular to that one. This one, um, there's a lot more to be gained by comparing it really to ourselves and what we act like when we are kind of part of the church, when we're kind of part of that fold. It's like, how do we view the teachings of Christ? How do we view his loving guidance? He says, and if it so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoices more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. So, Heavenly Father loves us all. He wants us all to return. But we have to remember, just like the story of the prodigal son, that those that go astray are lost. Like, they are ones that are on the path to absolute destruction, while those who stay will receive the reward for which they stayed. They're not in any danger of losing that reward, whereas those that do go astray are in great danger of losing that reward. And even here he says, and if so be that he find it, not and when he find it. I know that it does say when he finds it later, but here it gives you a kind of a more of a spiritual insight that these sheep that wander can stay lost. They could be lost forever. And 
It's the same with uh, those who wander from the teachings of Christ, that they can remain lost. You know, they say all that wander are not lost, but they're lost to the shepherd. So maybe the sheep itself is not lost unto itself, but it's lost to the shepherd. And so here we're saying that uh, when he finds that one, and he's able to bring it back to the fold, save it from the inevitable destruction that is waiting along that path, then that is a cause for major rejoicing. That is a cause for, for celebration. And so he's not at all diminishing the importance of the sheep that stayed or the people of the church that don't wander. He's not at all diminishing that. But this person who was in dire situation, who was in a dire situation, who was going to lose their eternal inheritance, is now brought back and saved from that danger, which, again, is cause for celebration. Um... Even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. And so, again, we go back to the, uh, the children and how Heavenly Father feels about the children, that he doesn't want any of them to be lost. He doesn't want any of them to perish down a path of unknown consequences. He wants them all and he wants us all to return to him. And so here, again, it's not the will of your father. He does not want that one of these little ones, one of these children should perish. So that's why we're under strict commandment to take care of our children, to raise them, to instruct them, to get them prepared for the time when Satan has influence over them. Before they reach the age of accountability, the power to tempt them is not given to Satan. But after the age of accountability, they do have the responsibility and the ability to be tempted. And so it's our job to prepare them for that time so that they do not fall prey to Satan's temptations. And we continue, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. So moreover, so like how much more? He's saying that even, even more than this, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. So in comparison to the sheep who was lost, like here you and your direct influence over the choices and actions of another. If thy brother shall trespass against thee, Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. In other words, don't gossip about it. Don't go and tell your friends. Don't go and tell your, your neighbors, your parents, your everyone who like has an ear to listen about what happened. Just go to him alone. If he shall hear thee, in other words, if he's going to listen to you and agree and you two can work it out, thou hast gained thy brother. In other words... He is going to love you all the more because you didn't go and cause trouble for him. You actually went to him in an effort to salvage your relationship. Um, and when I say him, of course, I mean all men, men, women, whoever this needs to apply to. The Lord, when he was talking, a lot of times he was talking to huge groups of people and many times in huge groups of people, even in modern language, you refer as the kind of like the male side of things as being the general. So all men, he, him, they, them, you know, this idea of talking to um, if your brother, that means if the person that you know and have a relationship with, like a good relationship, familial friendly, whatever the relationship is. Doesn't matter your your gender. So, uh, and if he shall neglect to hear them, uh, or no, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, 
that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So in other words, this is the law of witnesses. And the reason why having the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Bible are so vitally important, because these are the witnesses of Christ. They're the witnesses of his divine sonship, of his plan, of Heavenly Father's plan of happiness. And so we need the mouth of two or three witnesses, which will establish the truth of everything that's being said. And so he says here that you take one or two more people that can corroborate your story, that can say that you're telling the truth, and bring it up to this, this brother. Don't bring in 500 people who don't need to know. Just a couple more people who can and have actual knowledge of the situation. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Now, this is not Christ saying to treat him poorly. Christ ate with the heathens and the publicans. Well, not the heathens as in those outside of the church, but heathens as in those who may not have believed that he was the Messiah. So, and he ate with the publicans. Like, there are many stories about that specifically, about him eating with the publicans. So, he's not saying to be cruel to them and cast them out and chase them and harm them and hurt them and whatnot. He's saying that if this person's not going to hear the church, then it's the same as if he's exterior to the church, as if he's not part of the church. So, yes, you excommunicate him. Allow him the chance to correct his mistakes, to learn of things, to, to be reconciled with the church after being so gravely offended, and then you bring him back in. I mean, many publicans became followers of Christ. So, anyway, uh, verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In other words, this is the sealing power, the ability to uh, to have families sealed together forever, whatever you bind on earth under the proper power is going to be forever in heaven. So when families are sealed on earth, that means that in heaven, they are there forever together in a family unit. And so, um, and whatever shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And this is more or less talking about the excommunication that if somebody desires to be apart from the church and you uh, excommunicate them, then in heaven, they're not considered as being part of the church. So again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. In other words, if you go together for a specific purpose, then anything that you are looking for and asking Heavenly Father to help you with, then you're going to succeed. Heavenly Father is going to give it to you. Maybe not in this life, maybe in the next life. Who knows? But Heavenly Father has promised that you will receive it. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am. There am I in the midst of them. And I think that's one of the greatest promises that Jesus Christ makes to us, saying that where when we gather together to worship him, to think about the plan of our Heavenly Father, to help other people, to provide service, to uh, visit the the uh, the imprisoned, to bring hung to bring food to the hungry and water to the thirsty, like whatever we're doing in the name of our Heavenly Father, then Christ is there with us. He's there supporting us, giving us encouragement, His Spirit, teaching us, helping us to succeed in these endeavors. And I know that as we really focus on inviting Christ into our lives, that we're going to succeed better in whatever endeavor we're engaged in no matter what that endeavor would be. Anyway, I thank you so much for watching today. I hope to see you tomorrow. And definitely, please let me know how you 
need these daily studies to go. I will see you tomorrow.